When you're describing the specular highlight or the glossy highlight of an object, it's going to be a very particular shape because as I've told you in previous videos, this shape tells a lot about the surface material. So when it comes to brush technique, I like to think of it in two ways. You've got additive, which is when you're physically applying pigment. So this would be an additive stroke. Or I could switch to the eraser tool and do subtractive. So here I'm removing pigment. And I like to use each of these when I'm describing light. And when it comes to this study, I'm not going to worry about anything other than the glossy highlight. So I'm just dissecting what that highlight looks like, and I'm going to not paint the entire rest of the rock. So the first thing I notice about this is that there's a very smooth shape of light. It stays pretty consistent across the entire arc. So I'll draw that with a soft round brush. But now you'll notice the edge where the highlight ends is very harsh. It's got a very sharp quality to it and it picks up some of that rocky bumpiness. So it's a very broken highlight with some texture to it. So I'll show you what the brush I'm going to use to define that edge looks like. If I were to use it additively, adding pigment, this is what it would look like. But instead I'm going to use that as my eraser shape. So I'll undo that, zoom in, and with my eraser selected, I'll choose that brush and erase away the edge. So there you can see it's much sharper and it indicates some of that bumpiness in the fine detail of the rock surface. So you've got two different things at work here. A smooth gradation of light, which was a great opportunity to use the soft round brush, but then a sharp jagged edge, a great way to subtract away with a textured brush. As with all studies, you have to be able to learn something from this exercise. So while I was contemplating the softness of the light as well as the sharpness of the edge of the reflection, I have to be able to reproduce that in an imagined setting. So I'm going to draw a second version of this as if it were a small circular rock. So I'll make a new layer and I'll start with that soft highlight using the soft round brush. So here I'm not using the photo reference anymore, but I'm remembering it. This is sort of like a test to make sure I was really critically studying and not just painting what I was looking at. And now I'll get the eraser tool, select the textured brush, and erase out that edge. So there you can see a similar highlight. And maybe I want to free transform it to make it a little smaller. But it's this second half, the trying to apply it to an imagined form, that really helps with locking in the study information. For a final example, I took two slightly more challenging objects. First, a polished stone, and secondly, a bell pepper. And the glossy highlights on each of these have multi-layered effect going on. Whether it's a soft halo, which is then centered by a sharp, bright highlight, or in the case of the stone, there's even a bit of lens flare happening. In order to stay clean with these, I did each of these components on their own layer, only flattening them down once I was satisfied with the overall look. Because most of what describes the highlight is that transition from light to dark. Is it a smooth, slow one, or is it a sharp, to find one. So using extra layers can help you in this pursuit. So it might not seem particularly exciting, but go find images like these on the internet and try drawing their specularity. It's amazing what you'll find about the variety of all the surfaces around you. They really all do have very different specularity. So give it a try.